Hallelujah. God bless you. The Lord is good. Now, I want to read from 1 Corinthians 3. Now, the Corinthian church was getting into carnality. There was all kinds of things going wrong with it. And Paul wrote to them, addressing these things. And I want to read from 1 Corinthians 3. And it says the following. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as, as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. So he couldn't talk to them as mature believers, but only as babes. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able to. Okay. So you can only feed them the milk, right? Stuff for babies, not the meat, not the strong stuff of the word. And this is why I couldn't. Verse 3, for you are still carnal. They were still in the flesh. They were still being led by their flesh and not by the spirit of the Lord. Right? For where there are envy strife and divisions among you are you not carnal and behaving like mere men so there was envy right all these jealousies there was fighting there was divisions and this was happening within the church we're not talking about people in the world here this is not addressed to people in the world this was addressed to the church and they were behaving it says like mere men they weren't behaving like believers Okay, so let's look at these things. <clears throat> now, I've seen this occurring in church. I have. I've seen this occurring at different times where people have fought over really trivial things, where there's been jealousies, where there's been divisions, where people haven't wanted to associate with others and didn't want to talk with different people and avoided them. I've seen all this, and sometimes it's over really trivial things as believers we have to rise above these things let's look at the first one envy okay being jealous of others now one of the ways the lord tests your heart is you know other people are going to be blessed at times they are okay now maybe in material things maybe they'll get new a new car or a new house or you know their business will go really well and you might be struggling in that area. Or maybe they've received healing in some area. Or they've been blessed with a baby and, and you really want to have a baby. Or, or, you know, they've been promoted in the Lord. They've, they've been, you know, put in charge of a ministry or something. Well, the thing is, if you feel yourself getting at all jealous, getting that envy in your heart. You know, I know for myself... I make sure that I pray and bless those people. You know, and I say, thank you. Lord, thank you so much for, for the blessing that you've given to that person. Just bless them. I thank you, Lord, that you bless those people with a new car. I thank you, Lord, that you bless those people with a baby. Whatever it is that you're feeling jealous about, instead of giving into the flesh, get it before the Lord and bless those people. Right? Make sure that your heart is right with God, because that's what's really important, your heart before the Lord. Okay, that's my way of dealing with envy. Okay, you know, I, I, you know, probably the only thing that I've ever been envious of is when people have gone on lovely holidays overseas. And I thought, oh gosh, I'd love to go on holiday <laughs> or go to these places. But I've, you know... Made sure that I've got my heart right and said, Lord, bless them. Bless that person. Thank you that you've blessed them. Praise the Lord. It talks about strife and divisions among you. Well, when you mate with argumentative people, you don't have to prove your point. You don't have to be right. Okay? You don't have to try and change people and make them see your opinion. Sometimes you just have to walk away. And say, well, bless that person. If they want to think like that, so be it. But I'm not going to argue with them. Okay? I am not 
you know, I'm not going to get into all these divisions and get into carnal things. I'm going to bless people and be a blessing to them. You have to rise above that. Okay, and make sure that your heart is right before God. And I just want to quickly look at Ephesians 4. <clears throat> Ephesians 4 talks about the opposite of what was going on in the, in, the, in the Corinthian church. And it says here, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love. So here he's talking about bearing one another in love, lowliness, gentleness, like not having to win arguments, not having to prove points, but with all lowliness and gentleness, right? And here's verse three, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Okay, so, so there it is, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. You know, we don't have to win arguments. We don't have to try and prove points, right? Unity is so important. I know that if somebody hasn't paid me back something that they promised to pay me back, there's times when you just say, hey, bless them, let it go. Doesn't matter if they didn't pay me back. It's better to maintain the unity, okay? Better not to take offense. If somebody says the wrong thing, about you and says all kinds of or gossips about you well you know you bless them you have to rise above it and keep your heart right before almighty god so watch out for that just make sure that your heart is right before the lord and endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace hallelujah god bless you